Of all the abuses revealed by the church committee, none was more shocking than the FBI's efforts to intimidate the Reverend Martin Luther King, Jr. I remember a staff assistant who was looking into these files coming to me one day, and he was ashen. He said, you cannot believe what we're reading now. On the night of March 8, 1971, a group of burglars broke into the FBI's office in Media, Pennsylvania, a small town outside Philadelphia. In a half an hour, they collected perhaps the most important batch of bureaucratic contraband in American history. 1,000 documents, nearly half of which dealt with the FBI's secret counterintelligence program, COINTELPRO. A furious J. Edgar Hoover ordered an all-out investigation, hoping to stave off the embarrassing revelations that were sure to follow. But no arrests were ever made, and the perpetrators remain anonymous to this day. Over the next several months, a group calling itself the Citizens Commission to investigate the FBI mailed the most damaging documents to journalists, politicians, and academics. They provided the public's first glimpse of an FBI seemingly at war with social change. The counterintelligence tactics used so successfully against the Ku Klux Klan had been unleashed on black nationalists, anti-war activists, campus radicals, and others. According to one of the stolen documents, the Bureau hoped to enhance the paranoia endemic in these circles and further serve to get the point across there is an FBI agent behind every mailbox. What was dangerous here was that they were going after people's beliefs, ideas, viewpoints as citizens that they didn't like. This had nothing to do with the enforcement of the laws. People certainly knew that the FBI was engaged in these activities, the targets of them knew, uh, but they didn't have an understanding of it being a unified, coordinated program commanded from the top in Washington. The full story of COINTELPRO was laid out in late 1975 by the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence Activities, chaired by Idaho Democrat Frank Church. Many Americans who were not even suspected of crime Uh, were not only spied upon, but they were harassed, they were discredited, and at times endangered through the uh, covert operations of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Of all the abuses revealed by the Church Committee, none was more shocking than the FBI's efforts to intimidate the Reverend Martin Luther King, Jr. I remember a staff assistant who was looking into these files, coming to me one day, and he was ashen. He said, you cannot believe what we're reading now in this file of what they were doing to Martin Luther King. Uh, the Bureau went so far as to mail anonymous letters to Dr. King and his wife, which were mailed shortly before he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, and finishes with this suggestion. King, there is only one thing left for you to do. You know what it is. You have just 34 days in which to do it. You are done. The letter was accompanied by surveillance audio allegedly of King engaged in extramarital sex. The implication was clear. The civil rights leader could either commit suicide or see his reputation destroyed. Defenders of the FBI pointed out that such activities were only a small percentage of the Bureau's work, that an even smaller fraction of these operations were illegal, and that the worst of those, including the King letter, were the responsibility of renegade assistant director William Sullivan, not J. Edgar Hoover. Yet the committee's revelations forced even the Bureau's staunchest supporters to concede that the FBI had gotten out of control. The top leadership of the FBI lost their way because the temptation to use public power and play God is almost irresistible. 
By laying bare the Bureau's abuses, the church committee overturned half a century of G-Man mythology. Where the FBI had been seen as a heroic organization uh, led by a legend, it was now seen to be as an organization at war with American civil liberties, uh, led by a vindictive, irrational, uh, perhaps criminal leader. J. Edgar Hoover changed from being one of the great heroes in American history to becoming one of the demons in American popular culture. In the wake of the hearings, the FBI's approval ratings reached an all-time low. But one counterintelligence operation remained largely immune from the chorus of criticism, the Bureau's successful war on the Ku Klux Klan. 